So we've been in this new rig for about two months now. We got all the solar gear moved over from the Valor. But the one thing we hadn't done is get our server GX panel routed up into the front bay so it's easily accessible and viewable. It's always nice to be able to see what you want to see right from inside the rig. So let's get started on that. What I got to get done is run an HDMI extension from here up and through the basement. And then we'll need USB power to come power this guy because you HDMI extension cables don't typically have USB power and it'll have voltage drop over that length. So most people recommend keeping the factory length of USB powered as close as you can to the display unit. Now we're gonna go inside. Let's get the uh, control panel out from next to the door and we're gonna get into what's involved in that. Let's figure it out. All right, on typically most of the Brinkley's, you have a cabinet panel right here with your central controls that go to the unit. Light switches, tanks, awnings, slides are all right here. Optimally, I would prefer the server to be a little lower and closer to your face, but I've seen some people even move this up. I don't want our controls where Anna has to reach up here like this. She's, she's not short, but that's way up there. So the server is gonna be up here. It's a little high, but you typically are just looking at what your battery levels are and what your solar incoming is. So that's what we mainly need to see. And that's where we're going to put it on these. Frankly, install these with eight screws that come around the outside here. I already got some of these backed out. I want to finish backing those out and we're going to pop this panel off and see what it looks like. And as typical, that is a square bit head on these. Except I can't get to that because this is a fatty. So I'm going to get a different tool. So if you've never installed a Serbo GX panel, they have this wonderful slotted thing so it can lay flat inside of cavity. However, it requires a big area to be cut out of whatever panel you're installing in. So I got two options to cut into this panel for that. First one, oscillating saw. So I can just cut out a notch. Second option is trusty hole saw kit. So I'll find a small radius that I need that matches up to that, which is probably more like this guy. And then I'll slide it out a little more. That'll give me a nice clean cut. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do here. But as I stated a second ago, the first step, get this big honking panel off. See what we're working with. Show me what you're working with. Uh, back these screws out. Step one, it's getting the bits into the screw. Always drop your screws. Hold on, I got one second here. They're a little hard to see. Uh, if I use my flex, fine, it'd probably be easier, but you know. Sometimes I don't want to do that. It makes it really long. Yeah, the whole thing comes out. So what we're going to do is mount, cut right up here and route the HDMI cable right through one of these feeds. So this is going to get us down to the basement. The dimmer is not quick connect. They have this RJ11 cable behind the panel. If that was moved over a quarter of an inch, I would be able to unplug that. And these are a quick disconnect from the control panel. So, you know, let's uh, let's just work through this here. We're gonna... Oh no, you need to just... Yeah. So we're gonna use this guy as our template. Figure out how to fit it. Need a little bit of space. Cool, made a mark. I can work with that. <laughs> All right, uh, that gives us room. Cool. I just gotta mount this ring get the routers and clean all the dust out of this. Which is really nice. So that wasn't enough. So I'm going to need to trim a little more out here because this is hitting. Problem solved? Problem staying solved. I tried to put them in these holes, but these holes are actually... Oh, you're in the wrong hole. Wrong hole. That works much better. Huzzah! Just snapped right in. So there's indents on the back of the panel to, to cover the screws. That's what was messing up. It helps you put it in the right hole. I am. Yeah. We're gonna try and route this guy. There is a board stud right there inhibiting my 
clearance, noise tables are tight. Uh, All right. Yeah. Got that fish. You good? You can sit on the edge of the counter right here for a second. I'm gonna go see if it dropped down. All right, let's fish that cable down. Let's see if it showed up anywhere. There it was. Dropped right down. Put out this guy and over. All this nonsense. All right. Now I have our HDMI cable right here. I need a USB extension. Finally, USB ports are over here. But we'll get that figured out in just a moment. I need to reach these outlets, which are all of, I don't know, a foot away. And then I'm gonna do some cable ties and hold this HDMI cable up. Not the ideal spot to come through. I'm gonna rerun a new hole here later. This is gonna be a 12 volt fan, circulate air into the battery bay from this heated space. Yeah. Oh, I saved the wiring connections prior to disconnecting this so that I knew what to wire back up. My cable routed through. RJ11 for the fan. One connect, plug back in. I just gotta wire up the dimmer switch and put this back in. All right, now comes the fun part of getting these screws back in those tight little pockets. But everything else is back up. Control's working. Just gotta get USB. I need a USB extension. Not good. So I'm trying to get this nice and flush so this looks good. Survey says we have power. We now have HDMI cable tucked nicely up here along the ceiling. Still want to reroute this. That comes through the basement. I have it zip tied up behind the strut. It lands nicely on the servo. And that, friends, is how you get a servo routed, frankly, in uh, probably about 15 20 minutes. Hardest part was getting that panel out, uh, holding it, getting the cuts. Otherwise, very simple with the where they already run the wires down from the panel. HDMI fit right down that chute. So the reason I wanted to make sure, share this because I ran all our 110 wires under this. They're all under here to the inverter. And I would have had to order longer HDMI cables to route with that. As I already had 15 foot cables from the last rig, I wanted to keep it simple and use what I had. So I went up and over and that's how we get it done. And uh, stay tuned for next time. We're going to do some more Starlink stuff and show you what we got in this network. So take care. Have a great day.